Hello. Hello. <laughs> Uh, welcome to Fern the Camper live stream. Tonight's subject is unexpected thingies. Unexpected surprises. <laughs> surprises. Thingies, unexpected surprises. surprises. When you're out camping or if you've booked a destination and something you were just not expecting comes up. Mm -hmm. um, and tonight we have something a little special because we have two other RV families that have sent in their stories for us to read. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to jump straight into that. Um, Let's with... say hello if you're there as well. Let's... Yes, I don't, I can't see if anyone's actually watching yet. Right, see zero. Right zero. now we have zero. Let's do this right. Zero. zero people watching we um talking to ourselves. so we're just talking to ourselves First but of you know what we do that all the time we do so that's okay oh. so our okay. first story okay is from the camping costas and i have left their link in the description below so do find them they're on instagram and they are on youtube um so they entitled this story almost not campers <laughs> sounds ominous <laughs> okay so, uh, when Holly first approached me about writing content relating to unexpected surprises in destinations booked for their vlog, for the camper, uh, I admittedly was a bit concerned about the content uh, we would be able to provide. You see, we were almost not campers. I do have to say, this is also the abridged version, <laughs> and you will get the full version on our website because that will be going up hopefully next week good morning i'm oh, sorry good evening living <laughs> the good life rv it's wonderful to see you so we are talking about um, unexpected surprises when rving and camping feel free to jump in the chat and we are also reading the camping costas short story <laughs> So, um, the handy half to the Camping Costas duo, Tony, grew camping. He grew up camping. His parents and grandparents camped, beginning in a tent and upgrading to a pop up, then a travel trailer, like us, and eventually a Class A, like living the good life RV. <laughs> <laughs> Tony has fond memories of camping every weekend with his parents and grandparents, playing and doing homework at a picnic table by the light of a lantern while his mother finished her master's degree in teaching. I, Ashley, on the other hand, grew up never setting foot inside an RV until Tony's parents' RV. Unless you count that time when I was 12 or 13 when a great aunt or uncle came to visit for a few days in their own RV. In fact, in my vows, I even mentioned not knowing what a fifth wheel even was prior to meeting Tony. Fast forward to another year after we were married. To make an incredibly long story short, due to Tony's job situation, we decided to purchase a travel trailer for him to live in Monday through Friday while being home at the weekends. It was cheaper than renting an apartment, and the plan was that we'd also have camping trips. That arrangement lasted about a year until our eldest was born. Tony then changed companies in order to be home full time. We used the trailer sparingly here and there for the next three and a half years, mainly taking trips to Disney's Fort Wilderness. I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> but mostly it sat. In fact, earlier this year, I was pushing hard for it to be sold to get it out of the driveway. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> then COVID happened and our, along with everyone else's, entire world got turned upside down. Mm -hmm. I remember being annoyed that our daughter's preschool would be closed for two weeks between COVID and spring break. <laughs> Hello, Drifty Stevens. <laughs> How laughable. As the reality of the pandemic set in, we began, like a lot of people, to evaluate how we were living our lives and how we wanted to live going forward, which is pretty much what we did, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and okay, um, I, says Ashley, realized what a blessing having the RV could be to our family. So I made Tony a deal. We keep the trailer if we can remodel it. Uh, hello, Justin Stevens. We are doing good. Thank you. Um, we are reading Ashley's story. Um, she's another RV family. This is from the Camping Costas. 
and we are talking about unexpected surprises when you're camping, when you're RVing, mm -hmm. or if you've booked someplace and it just turned out to be more or less, not more or less, but more <laughs> or less than what you were expecting. Mm -hmm. So Tony, Ashley's Tony, took the deal and they began the remodel of their RV on June 1st, 2020. So skipping forward, now Ashley loves her RV. She says, now I, the girl that was pushing for the RV to be sold and often lamented about how much she detested camping, runs the social media pages, films and edits all of their YouTube videos. Again, link is in description. Please follow them. They are amazing. So the most unexpected surprise for their family or at least one member of the family which is ashley <laughs> is how much they could come to love and appreciate all of what camping has to offer she says she's constantly reading stories of how camping is changing people's lives whether by allowing them to gain financial independence become closer as a family or just spark curiosity and a love of nature they are now striving to emulate that and provide their children with an amazing experience and memories that they will treasure, similar to the memories that she and Tony had, um, or, or similar to Tony's uh, adventures as a child, which he remembers on his camping trips. So thank you camping, she says, you are one of my life's most unexpected and most loved surprises. <laughs> I think that's actually quite a, an important thing as well. She said there, when you got kids, they're going to remember these trips. Yeah, they, they are going to remember absolutely them. Absolutely so, remember. Yes. So um, that's something Thorne's going to remember a lot, isn't it? When she's Absolutely. Justin and Christina, how are you doing? Good to see you and welcome. And Michael McReynolds, good to see you as well. Uh, he stopped by to show my support to your channel. Smash that button. Thank you. <laughs> We are doing well, thank you. Hello, Nikki, good to see you <laughs> as always. Um, Justin and Christina, I really do want to get your um, stories of what it's like with your newborn, what it's like to just mm. transfer over being full time and then being full time with a baby is such a crazy a change. change. Yeah. And not only that, you've been rocking your live streams <laughs> and you didn't slow down on your videos. I, you're like, superhumans i don't know how you do it that's amazing i think when um, thorn was a baby we became zombies we I became think. total hermits i yeah. don't think we went out anywhere uh it was it was really sad i must eventually <laughs> have to go to work and i was just zombie in front of the computer well yeah because we we're just so tired so and we yeah. were so that's so tired thank you justin yeah. christina really appreciate that very very much yeah. uh okay so did you want to shock into um oh, an unexpected uh, what about uh, yes? So I mentioned this. Um, are you doing cave amnesia? Yeah, okay. about about two years ago, um, we were back in England visiting, and what we usually do um, when we're there is obviously spend time with my parents, and then us and my brother, sister-in-law, and their daughter will just have, have a big several days vacation. together. We we'll go, we'll go for a trip somewhere. So we went down to Cornwall, southwest England. And we we're doing quite a few things, Jamaica in, we went to you know, various places. And then at one point my brother said, hey, tomorrow, how about there's these caves up here? And we're like, ooh, so we're like, cave? caves, we like caves, we yeah, let's caves. go and see these caves. So we said, yeah, we'll do that. And we arranged, we're going to meet there at a certain time. So um, on the way, um, they were in their own car, we were in our car, we're driving up uh, towards these caves. And on the way, I said to Holly, do you remember that? other cave place we went to <laughs> yeah, um, now we're describing it there's there's one big cave that she used for concerts um it's uh, i mean they get some fairly well-known artists go there even though it's a fairly small venue but and we talk about that and these pools they had there and I was, where was that and i was like i can't remember we're trying to rack up brain. was it yorkshire <laughs> was it in <laughs> wales we're trying to rack up where were these caves um, and anyway, we, we, we're still thinking about it when we're coming towards the caves we're coming to on this particular. And as we drive to these caves, we're like, I remember where those caves were. They're here. There they are, right here. They're and yes, here. we were going up to the caves that we forgotten where they I, were. <laughs> I don't know how we have, because we, we, we love seeing that cave the mm. first time. And, and uh, we're like, yeah, let's go in that cave. Let's do the cave tour. And they have a huge lake inside the cave. 
um, and they've got the lights on the on it, and it, it just looks really magical. We're like, how could we forget it? I think the thing that showed us up most on that one was that we had completely forgotten where it was. And when we got there, so this is two years ago, Thorn was seven years old, mm. and the she remembered going she there, was, and she was three. I think maybe younger. She was like two and a half. No, it was three. I it remember was three, three okay. but yeah, and she remembered everything about the caves. Oh yeah, this where's Tinkerbell? She said someone was like was tinkerbell and the, the guide there was saying oh yeah so it's, it's that pool in that cave over there and i said to claudia what's, what's tinkerbell here i don't remember that shit no if you look at the water you see little flashes and yes you do it's just water dripping the three-year-old and the, held the memory yeah until she was until seven she was seven and remembered all those bits about it and then she was telling us about telling what we would have forgotten <laughs> Yeah, so, um, but then I did that to my parents once as well. <laughs> uh, Nick Spick says, like Timon and Pumbaa finding that place I told you about. Sorry, couldn't resist. Yeah, it's exactly like that. <laughs> yeah. but I did that to my parents once. Um, we went to a place when I was five. And then about, I don't know, 15 years later, we went there again. And we were waiting for it. There wasn't a train for a long time along a steam railway. And I said, well, why don't we go to the pub around the corner and get something to drink? And they're like, how do you know there's a pub there? Huh. I said, because we went there last time we were here. And I said, that was 15 years ago. And I said, well, I'm sure the pub's still there. <laughs> and, and it was. And it was, <laughs> yeah. So there you are. So There we are. So I'm going to read our next story. We have okay. a story from Loving Life Hitched Up. And again, their um, contact details are in the description mm. below. So mm. do follow them. Um, they're on Facebook and on Instagram. Mm. Okay, so their story says, probably our best surprise stay was at a campground this past summer in 2020. We were staying in a campsite listed as waterfront, but it was about 100 yards through the trees to the water. We were said that, or we were sad that it was not on the water, like many of the other sites around them. Um, when they finally received confirmation that a very popular campground had just opened up for reservation, they jumped quickly on a disappearing campsite list, just grabbing whatever they could get. They were just happy to get a spot at all. This campground supposedly is known to be very hard to get reservations in and the reservations fill up within minutes once listed and that's months in advance. So they arrive at the campground, um, long check-in line, and they opted to go to the beach and return later for the check-in. The ranger advised them that the park had limited sites and that the place is not fully open, but the area is good to go. So they started pulling down the camp road, counting out the sites and looking for the site that they had just randomly picked. Um, and as they rounded the bend, following the numbers on the site poles, as you do, <laughs> they realized that their site was located adjacent to the intercoastal waterway. A waterfront site with nothing between their camper and the water with views left and to the right. They say it was amazing. They had no idea when they picked randomly from these list of numbers, which of the campgrounds um, would be where. And I've lost my place. <laughs> 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 the best part for them was uh, beyond the amazing view. It was just a state park and they had an eight night stay which was incredibly affordable because state parks, reasonable. they tend yeah. to be really affordable and they just tend to be gorgeously kept. Mm -hmm. Say so they say, sometimes you just get lucky and the sun shines bright on your adventures. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a bad day camping when you are with the love of your life. But sometimes the great times get even better with an amazing view from TJ and red with loving life hitched up. Thank you both. Mm. Great story. <laughs> Hello, Weekend RVing. Good to see you. <laughs> Justin and Christina say, popped in to say hi, mm. but have to go walk Angel, our dog now. Goodbye, <laughs> Justin and Christina. Um, have a, a an awesome live, everyone. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. And uh, yeah, have, have a good walk. We will see you yeah. later. <laughs> so if anyone's got anything they want to mention about surprise things that have, that have happened, I think we're talking mostly good surprises. Can we, can we include bad on this or are we talking good? I think either will work. Either surprise. Yeah, Do okay. you have another story? 
Um, I got, I got a couple, I think. Um, there was, I mean, should I mention when I went through the Peak District? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so um, this is years ago. This is before but I met Holly. But that's a good one. That's not a bad one. No, this is this is a good one. Yeah, <laughs> it's before I met Holly. Um, it was years and years and years ago, uh, living in England, and my brother and I wanted to do a trip to Liverpool. You know, see the Beatles sites, the Cavern, Beatles Story Museum, places like that. So we're going to do a day trip. The best way to get there, we we was to go by train. We get the fast train into London, then a fast train out of London up to Liverpool. So there we went, very fast, up to Liverpool, had our day in Liverpool, and then time to go home. We got to Liverpool Lime Street Station, and we looked up for the train to London, and there was a time to London. Next. Cancelled. Oh, cancelled. Okay, so they got on here. When's the next one to London? Cancelled. Cancelled. What's happened? So something big had happened. They'd cancelled all the trains to London, and I spoke to one of the members of staff at the station. I said, when's the next one to London? And he said tomorrow and he explained what had happened and i was like okay and then i looked up at the board and there was one train to norwich which is on the east coast we want to get sort of in that direction now this cross-country train to norwich very slow very windy but we thought well we want to get home tonight let's just get on that train and we'll work it from there so we got on the train we left liverpool going through manchester you know these are cities i'm oh, sorry i have the long and winding road stuck in my <laughs> head now <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool, because, yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, the train left Manchester, which is a city. Is you know, some people like cities, some don't. I'm not a big fan, but came out of Manchester and then it sort of went through this tunnel. So going through this really long tunnel, and then the train went out the tunnel at the other end, and me and my brother just looked at each other and we went. The actual word was, me. <laughs> yeah. Um, we just entered the Peak District, absolutely beautiful area of England, Northwest England. Not a house in sight, not a building in sight, just pure mountains, greenery, mm. rivers, that sort of thing. And we just went through and for the next, I don't know how many miles we're going through this absolutely gorgeous countryside. And we eventually got home and said to our parents, we need to go and visit the Peak District. Go on holiday. We've just been through there. It looks amazing. And so we did. We went and visited the Peak District and we stayed there and it was fantastic. It was nice. And later, I remember I was at university and we did do a trip there as well from there. And it was like, that that was a change. I would never have thought of going to the Peak District. It was not something that shouted at me until then. It's like, we've got to come back here. We've got to see this place again. Fantastic. Yeah. A place called Castleton, I remember, it was very nice. Sounds like a good name. It's a castle there. It's a ton of castles there, apparently. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. So that was a nice surprise, and that was really cool. Mm. Very good. Been ready to go to bed, Drifty oh, Stevens. It is that. Good yeah. night, Drifty Stevens. Thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm. We do appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, if anyone's got surprises, let us know. Have you got any you want to share? Oh, there was that time before we were married mm -hmm. when I had the truck. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, so uh, I took Clive up to the mountains mm -hmm. and we went to Big Bear. Mm -hmm. We weren't going to stay. We weren't going to go camping. We were just going to go for a day trip, I think. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, we, we found this little windy road and it had a really gorgeous view. And... Um, Oh, Nick Spix is typing the ghost story right now. Oh, How yeah. exciting! Yeah. And so, you know, we look at this ridge and it's just this gorgeous view um, of this valley below us. And it's kind of a dirt track. There were a few trees around, not a lot of houses. I don't see any houses around there. It was mm. just, I think it must have been like a, an old access road to one of the ski slopes or something. But mm. it was quiet. No, no cars came by, but it, it felt beautiful and peaceful. And then all of a sudden, a big truck, bigger than my truck, <laughs> you know, roars by, roar, you know, and these these four, you know, early 20-somethings get out. And uh, one of the guys says, hey, hey, we're going to go see this silver mine. Do you want to come with us? Um, and this is before cell phones, or at least before, you know, cell phones were common so mm. and, and besides there would have been no reception so I, I have a feeling this guy just wanted to make sure extra humans were with them in case mm -hmm. something went wrong 
Um, so we're like, okay, yeah, sure. A silver mine sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. So these, I don't wish, and now there was at least the guy who talked to us. Were the other about four of them? They, they were about remember, four, yeah. yeah. What two girls and two guys, or was it? I don't quite I remember. I can't really remember. No. But... Um, so they say this way, this way, and <laughs> one of them could have been leading this to our murder. You know, <laughs> one of them just disappears into these rocks, and and uh, we're we're like, what just happened? And and the other one's like, no, oh, don't worry, we always do this. And they just another one disappears into the rock. Uh, and I can't remember if we had to go head first in or if we just lowered mm. ourselves in, but you had to kind of contort your body yeah. to get in. And the opening was um, really tiny. I didn't think mm. if I had not seen them get in first, I would not have tried. Um, mm. But we got in and this huge cave opened up and you, I don't, was there a mining like track? There was there? a bit of track there. And, yeah. And, oh my gosh. Yeah. It was so exciting. So we had to like shimmy on, <laughs> on our bellies at some of the parts and then it would open up to another cavern. And one of the shimmy bits between two larger caverns, and this was not a marked cave. This mm. was an old abandoned mine that, they had found and a few other people have found but it wasn't on any map um but during the sh shimin there was quite a lot of dust um really fine dust and you know we look up and all of these bats are just like uh, maybe a foot above our heads all hibernating there, all they, yeah. hibernating all all asleep hello live, live life with the view good right. to see yeah. you <laughs> thank you so much for stopping by yeah so we're shimmying under this dust and we realized that this is actually all dried out guano this is bat poop that we're like right right yes. in our faces yeah. um but just seeing the bats just right above us was really yeah. cool i think they were hibernating rather than just because they, they weren't budging oh they, they yeah it was their winter sleep yeah. they weren't but they weren't gonna come i remember out. we had to be careful because where you could stand up it was, it was basically a mine shaft wasn't yeah. it where, where they had the it's a track where they push the cart and you see them on the westerns you know mm. but if you lost your balance if you put your hand against the wall to balance yourself you probably would have squished a bat yeah and we obviously we didn't want to do that so um i think at one point i did actually touch a bat just slightly but Aww. it didn't budge it was sleepy, it was sleepy. It's yeah a very sleepy bat. but all these bats everywhere yeah so that that was, was really cool. uh, there, yeah. there were um a couple of broken supports and <laughs> with, with dropped rocks so i i we were in california of course so mm. If there had been an earthquake that was kind of on our mind, um, and I've seen those westerns <laughs> as well where the mines collapsed, because <laughs> obviously there had been a, at least one or two collapses yeah. fairly recently. That's why we could had to only shimmy in some, yeah, that's why we had to shimmy in to get in. But it mm. was definitely a really big surprise, and that was called Lucky Mine. Apparently, mm. that's, what, that's what they were telling us. Mm. I've not seen Didn't it, look very lucky. I've not seen it on any map. <laughs> Oh, but, you won't uh, find it on no map. You won't find it on no map. <laughs> but it was definitely a really surprising adventure yeah. to, to our day trip. To and that Big was Bear. fun. That was fun. That was really fun. Didn't you make you made a little keychain? I made keychains, the yeah, Lucky, Lucky Mine Expedition. Mine Expedition. Yeah. And I, I, we dragged some other friends up there as well. And I'm like, we're going to England, but pass on the tradition. Make sure every year you take at least three people to the Lucky Mine. Mm. And I don't think no, nobody did that. To be honest, I don't think I'd ever be able to find it again. <laughs> no, I have yeah, no I idea where that was. I don't know how we went back and found it again the second I time. Know. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. But no, that that was that was a fun thing. I, I like it because yeah, you, you you go somewhere, you think you know what you're going to see, and then just something just happens, hmm. and it takes you in a very unexpected different direction. Very unexpected turn. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um. I'm just trying to see my mind. I'm just trying to think of anything that unexpectedly happened in the negative way. Oh, but I'm not sure. I'm I'm, I'm racking my brain at the moment. Well, there's so the Villa Olympia, but we talked about that we already. We did talk about. But that did before. they hear it? Because we were paddling in, in the crab monster. Oh, the crab monster. That one. Quite the Villa Olympia in Greece, which was like a very poorly kept. Run down, but that was really well planned. So it wasn't, yeah, you know, it had that, yeah. really good reviews in the mm. guidebook. And this is before internet reviews. Um, mm. Gosh, I sound old. 
Um, <laughs> you know, we had which book was that? It was it, it was, Lonely Planet. It was. It was a, one of those survivors' guides to it was, something. Wasn't yeah, it? something yeah. like the famous guidebooks, and uh, this mm. place had been visited. Everything you need to know about something. Yeah, everything you need to know about Greece, and um, mm. we called up this. This place was affordable for backpackers. It had uh, an English innkeeper. Yeah. Yeah, she was very nice when we spoke, and, she and we called her from the UK, and we're just, you just make sure, you know, can we book this? We want to make sure we have a place to stay when we land. We are landing really early because we are going to be flying. Was it Ryanair or EasyJet? EasyJet. EasyJet. It was a cheapo flight that landed at 3 a.m. So we would have been coming in super early. And yeah, we, we uh, saw the other sites of Greece when you land at 3 a.m. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> But yeah, anyway, we made it to that hotel and uh, she screamed at us for knocking on the door, even even though she knew that we were coming mm. at 3 a.m. It was six, I think. Oh, by yeah. the time we got to hers, it was six. She's like, people live here. And I'm <laughs> like, he, are we coming in because you told us we need a place to stay. And you we actually booked it so we would get this night if we came really early. Mm. Um, so it's not like we, we had a 3 p.m. check-in. <laughs> yeah. She like knew we were just off the plane and we had booked like the night before so we would have a place to stay. And she mm. went and screamed at us. Mm -hmm. uh, she was louder than we were and woke everyone up. Uh, and then she said the hotel was actually closed. Mm -hmm. But, but she'd, let us she'd let us stay out of the goodness of her heart. And I'm like, wait a minute, woman. We booked with you three weeks ago, and we talked about us landing. And mm. I kind of think she was schizophrenic. I don't I know. Don't know. Yeah, she that, was definitely not all there. Yeah, that, that did sort of put me off. First night in Greece, and you're thinking, is this... Oh, yeah, but we saw the prostitutes first. We, we would have yeah. never seen that otherwise. <laughs> but then, of course, the rest of the trip was lovely, really nice. It was, so, yeah. it was. But that place was dire. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they were they were like you know those flea eggs. If you have cats and you ever have a really bad flea infestation, and of course you take care of it, and it never comes back because you're on it. But you know what those flea eggs look like? And there were everything was covered in a white dust. And then you look closer, and they were all flea eggs. Mm -hmm. There was like a thick layer of flea eggs on the blankets, on the countertops, everywhere. It mm -hmm. was. Yeah. And the, oh, the bed actually was broken that we were it in. Was. It had like mm. broken springs. <laughs> Live life with a bee says, I should have grabbed popcorn for this story. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you got a microwave, it can happen fast. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we looked at each other. We're like, we can't stay here. I think I even said, let's just go back to the airport. No, I, I think I talked to you around. You like, did, this yeah. is an adventure. These things happen and yeah. we are going to find a better place. But for now, we have a bed. And this door kind of locks, sort and of. I'll sleep by the door. I think I'm because <laughs> I I have I have had uh, some karate background, um, mm. and I do know how to defend myself. Uh, and I'm I hi blue wave, <laughs> and I have no qualms taking down someone who walks through the door to get us. Um, mm. And I was very protective of Clive, <laughs> so I'm like I'll get him for you. You won't get near you. Um, but it was definitely mm. a horrible place. Yeah. yeah and then trying to shower in that room with a great big hole in the door um mm -hmm. it, it, it was not good <laughs> hello yeah. blue wave hello bob and debbie hope you are both very well <laughs> it makes a good story now it makes <laughs> we wouldn't remember story, it if it was yeah. just a plain hotel yeah but all of our friends from greece are horrified every time we, I know. we tell like, this story in greece, but then the best unexpected surprise when we were in greece do you mm. remember when we just hopped to the hydrofoil we didn't yeah. have any plans to go to the islands. We're like, we're you know like, what? Let's go to the islands. And let's we got go to the on this islands. Boat. We went out to yeah, a little island called Agistri was the foot yeah, we went to. And it was just so laid back. Immediately we got off the um, boat and this guy's like, want a nuzo? I'm like, yeah, which oh, is a hotel. I have a nuzo. So how much? Yeah, it's just later. Pay me later. Later. Yeah. And it was so opposite <laughs> it was to, to the big city stuff. To big city. So, I mean, I think big city life is, is the same everywhere. Everyone's stressed out. You've yeah. got just like unpleasant trees going on. And, mm. But you get back to the islands and, and the, the pace of life is so just so different. different. Laid back and mm. casual. Yeah. It's It was like, ah. Oh, Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I liked that. That was nice. That was very nice. Mm. Yeah. What other stories do you think we what have? Other stories. I'm trying to remember any stories now. 
I was thinking of one earlier, but it's completely gone out of my brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> unexpected. Well, uh, Nikki's writing a spooky story for us now. There was that yeah. time when I, okay, Clive and I both worked at Colchester Castle Museums. Mm. Uh, it's a service that has quite a few different museums in it, but mm. the castle itself, um, um, I was front of house you were he was like the posh guy behind the scenes uh i was the stupid girl who gave tours uh but part of my role in the morning was to you know, everyone to have like a job to do cleaning um sometimes it was the toilets and sometimes it was um you know just vacuuming certain galleries and it would just all swap roles around um but this morning not this morning but the morning that this tale happens in um i was on roll to go and clean the prison cells because the castle was a prison for a while. Lots of people um, died in those prison and cells. And yeah, yes. if anyone knows their their kind of witch lore history, the the uh, witch trial um, girls in Essex were taken to Colchester Castle. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of nasty things. Oh my gosh, Nikki, mm. thank you so much. That's our <laughs> first you. super sticker. <laughs> 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 really appreciate that. Thank you so, so much. Mm. So yeah, we were going, oh yeah, we're, so Colchester Castle, mm -hmm. dark, 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 dark history um, from Roman times and ev all the way up to, to, to present pretty much. I would say the dark history continues mm -hmm. as an ex-employee. I might be able to get away with saying <laughs> that. Uh, but anyway, so it was my job to unlock the prison. So I had to go in one section in mm -hmm. the dark with a little fish key and, and unlock and then go down and, and vacuum out and mop and then unlock the other big door that sometimes randomly without any wind slams itself shut. Um, anyway, I was at the top of the stairs and I had my fish key. I was ready to unlock that door. And the deepest, lowest growl mm -hmm. came from below. Um, now, hiking and growing up in Southern California, I have heard a mountain lion growl at me um, and on a trail. And that was pretty low. That was you. It's not something that a, a human can kind of just reproduce, or it's not something you can just have a recording on your phone of because you can't get that deep treble. Mm -hmm. This growl was about 10 times deeper than the mountain lions. <laughs> and I just went white as a sheet. And I think I ran all the way back up to the break room, which was another level up. But I'm like, I can't do it. Something growled at me. Um, and they're like, oh, you silly American. We'll do it. But yeah, I, I haven't been back in the prisons on my own since that <laughs> growl happened. And that is also a site where a few other employees had some strange experiences. I did try to scare a couple of colleagues there once. They didn't know I was there. They were the only two people in the castle. It was all closed and everything else. And I think I got the VR something. And I did a low, a low sort of, um, hello, something like I don't know. It was deeper than that. I got a bit wrong then, but yeah. And then I, I showed myself and they gave me a very stern look. <laughs> I was hoping they'd react in a much more scared way. But you know what? Just, Your yeah. colleagues aren't weren't quite as fun as the front of house group. No, they were front of house people. Oh, well. they were. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I won't ask who it was. There's a few front of house that did not have a sense of humor. Yeah, Never mind. there we go. I think I know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we're definitely not ever going to be re-employed by the castle. But hey, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going on to ghosty stories. We are, well, we are in Spooktober. Spooktober, um, yes. There we go. So we are going to be collecting spooky stories. So if you have a campsite spooky tale that you want to share, mm -hmm. that you want us to read out, um, which we can do here. If you want a more formal uh, storytelling, if you want it also for the website, we can pop it there as well. Or if you stayed in an extremely haunted B and B or hotel, Ooh, haunted campground, haunted floating hotel in Long Beach is one I'm thinking of as well. Oh yes, we stayed in a haunted hotel. Mm -hmm. We have. We have. How Actually, many times have we stayed in a haunted hotel? We've stayed several. Actually, talking of this, so I'm, I'm going to mention, and I, and I, yeah, I'm going to quickly mention a place in Devon place linton and Lynmouth, beautiful beautiful couple of villages and there's an old inn there that my ancestors used to run um called the cottage inn it's still going today and we we're there uh 20 years ago with my parents and we stayed at this inn at that point enough we've stayed there several times and 
yeah, my mum was saying about how it was like her mum grew up there and her uncle ran the place, things like that. And this guy said, oh, we've, um, yeah, because we've actually got a, a ghost here. Some of the staff here have seen her. We call her the Grey Lady, like, really. And he described this ghost as seen. And my mum just went, that's my grandmother. And he <laughs> described my great grandmother. Uh, I've never seen her. I'd actually quite like when I've when I've, when I've been there and stayed there a few times. I'd, I'd, I'd like to. I was thinking at the time, can you show yourself? We're related. It would have been nice Aww, to see her. I wanted to see your grandma. I wanted to see my great grandmother, but she didn't show herself. So but... she's she's not trying to spook you out. She no, doesn't want you I to go don't away. Don't want to be spooked by. I just like to say hello. I've never met her before. So yeah, but I've seen these ghost stories things that mm. people say we're ghost hunting it's okay knock twice and when something happens everyone screams, screams and runs, runs away, away. <laughs> yeah. hello victoria may wallace welcome and yeah. thank you <laughs> for stopping by <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was that's why i'd like to have that ghost in Kansas just to say hello to my relative yeah that'd be nice yeah mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, just texted me. Okay, I am going to go get my phone. I will phone. be right back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, it is October, spooky time. So yes, any ghost stories coming up will be pretty cool. And um, yes, I have worked on the Queen Mary in Long Beach. Some of you may know one of the most haunted places. I think it was the sixth most haunted place in the world. It was listed in Time Magazine and National Geographic. So I do have a few stories to tell on that, which I think will be later in the month. We'll talk about that one when uh, we get towards that particular date at the end of the month. So uh, that should be fun. I think I know someone else said they've got a, a Queen Mary story. I think someone who might be watching now. So we'll see. Well, I'm not sure if they're watching now. So I'm just going to get a phone. We'll see what that text is about. And uh, yeah. So anyway, if, if, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Clive, by the way. I'm Holly's husband. We are in Fern. This is Fern, our camper um and this is what we do so i can hear the front door opening we are on our driveway we're not camping right this second <laughs> so we are cheating a little bit but actually as it's october i did bring my spooky cup dark harbor an event held in october here in long beach except it's not going to happen this month sadly okay holly is okay. back oh no it's just what's our email <laughs> what's our email <laughs> You know that one. Mm. Do you want to come and sit back down? Yeah, give me a second. Okay. <laughs> All right. Right, okay. Okay, keys going back up. Keys go back up. All right. Oh, do you want to show them the hatchet? <laughs> Scoot over, that's spooky. Yeah, okay. Let's keep a hatchet just in case. Uh, on the bed, just in on case. On the bed, yes. Because you never know when you have to chop your way free. <laughs> <laughs> the things we keep in here. <laughs> no, no, give me the Est Wing. Okay. Come. This Est Wing has a story behind it. This mm -hmm. is the most awesome campsite tool you will mm -hmm. ever need for one um, because we can use the back end of it to like whack stakes in the ground mm -hmm. and the front of the end of it. You know, when you <laughs> buy your firewood. At, at a state park or any local campsite mm -hmm. and they just give you these giant logs that you have no kindling this fixes that mm -hmm. <laughs> my estwing hatchet is like the best trusty friend ever yeah, that's not what king charles the first said well he had a different kind of axe didn't he it was a big bigger he had yeah, a big but... beheading axe this this <laughs> well one... he didn't actually own it he was on the receiving end are you yeah. sure technically if he was king he owned everything didn't he? i suppose so yeah okay <laughs> anyway where was i <laughs> well, i don't know <laughs> you you just received the text yeah so there we go um well we're, we're talking about ghost stuff and then talking you showed stuff, your hatchet and then and i then, showed um, my hatchet yeah yeah which i picked up at at at, uh, at the most unglamorous camping gear place to pick things up um lowe's you think you think not not some fancy outdoor adventure spot in the middle of some rustic fun village no it was Lowe's. yeah well you could i don't know cut kitchen line with that i could yeah. totally cut kitchen line with that estwing 
<laughs> Live Life with a Bee says, um, who keeps a hatchet on the bed? LOL. Me, me, yes. me. And I think you also have sharp things next to your bed, unless I'm actually Mikey Chen has a has a samurai sword next to his <laughs> bed. And I do too. <laughs> because you never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. You, you never know why know. you want to make yourself a <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> you need to cut things up, yeah. <laughs> you never know when you have to hatch it your way apart. Exactly, mm. live life with a view. You never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should see professional help from this one. But, you know, in the meantime, it, mm. I always know where it is if we need to get more kindling for the fire. Yeah. Exactly. That's, there we go. You need a professional to cut kindling better. Yeah. We do. You cut it very well, actually. So. Thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> Not to mention, if anyone tries to break in, I'll hit you over the head of my water bottle. You can use the hatchet. Thank you. <laughs> use the hatchet. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. We just went down a slightly darker path. We did. Yeah. That's what happens when you start spooky stories. Mm hmm. That's right. Hmm. So has anyone had a really, did you talk about the haunted hotel? Well, I mentioned the Queen Mary and I said, uh, we'll talk about it maybe later this month. Oh yes. Okay. And we'll if, save that for proper yeah, spooktober. We can talk about ghosties. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm trying to think, has there, has anyone had experience at a haunted campsite? Because I have seen a few campers mm. um, go to haunted areas that have had either bottles on them mm -hmm. or had been um, reputed for being haunted. What was that um, battle site that Jonty was telling us where, where people kept seeing the same like apparitions of that evening of battle and i wonder if it's naseby maybe Naseby's. was it one of the civil war it was one english of the civil, civil war yeah, ones, english maybe. civil war ones yeah uh, and i think there's also meant to be a naval battle somewhere that people see i have heard that one yeah. as well and the creepy thing is is that even like the battle survivors mm. their ghosts or supposed because ghosts the are there, also yeah. seen of yeah <laughs> live life with the view says it was not on the bed though <laughs> well you know what i won't trip over it if it's on the bed you know <laughs> it makes more sense <laughs> that's say, i mean when you get it. battlefields i mean when you think there's probably an atmosphere there when yeah you think about battlefields whether it's british french american civil war whatever you know when you think of what went on there horrible stuff there's atmosphere to there some is, of them definitely, certainly which is definitely. not nice whether that's just something supernatural or just something held in the air or whatever it might I be. Do I do feel like know. sometimes it's... you just get into spots where you it it just doesn't feel right. Mm. It's just something we is... just know something has happened there. Actually yeah. little stories of the Queen Mary about that of children who don't know the history will suddenly stop and say, Did someone die yeah. here? And they're like, Yes and they know something happened but Yes, but we can't tell you exactly what because your parents might hit us. Yeah. <laughs> But when it's on such a huge scale as a battlefield, that's it's yeah, a it's, it's a lot, and it's obviously very sad events. Oh, yeah. live life with a view says mm. note to self: Holly is an absolute bad bottom. <laughs> 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 Thank you so there much. You <laughs> <laughs> Not one hundred percent sane, but you know yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I think if I were the Harry Potter character, it would be Bellatrix. Bellatrix, <laughs> yeah, that's, that makes sense. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. <laughs> Van Vita Travels, hello, how are you doing? <laughs> it has been a couple of weeks since we've seen you. <laughs> mm, good to see you. Good to see you. Mm. Do you have any um, tales of happy or unhappy surprises, things you were not expecting about adventures that you have booked? Mm. Victoria May Wallace says, I have a machete and a taser next to my bed. You go, girl. <laughs> That's. <laughs> The machete actually lives in the spare bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have actually got it. Actually, we got that while we were trekking through Thailand, didn't we? Oh, yeah. that That's a good story. We had the, we had the, the guides because we're going through the jungles, which we've mentioned before um, mm. on, on this feed. And um, they, they're hacking their way through this bamboo and everything else. Mm. And at the end, I think one person in our party said, would you sell your machete? One of the guys said, like, Yeah. And he sold it for what I suppose for them was quite pretty. They looked very happy, and then they looked um, very happy. And then, yeah. um, and then, 
I think because you want you, know, you and I think you like, oh, would you sell me yours and said that's another guy and he was very happy another as well. another big grin a big big uh, grin so they could probably get one for half the price yeah later. to be honest I felt I felt I, I felt really guilty after that I'm like oh I'm just like this westerner demanding something and mm. they have to give up this price possession but our guy's like, I can tell you feel a bit weird about this, but don't. Mm. He's got a very good price for it. He's going to yeah. get a new one. This mm. one's been repaired so many times. I'm like, yeah. I know. I love the repair love job. It's got stories behind it. It's got it, stories yeah. behind it. And it's the actual knife that mm. was cutting through the jungle with us. So Van Vida says, yeah, plan's still up in the air because of the pandemic. Mm. Of course, like most of us, the plan is still to leave Canada to somewhere warmer. Yay! <laughs> Canada's That's us. Beautiful. Canada yeah, is yeah. beautiful. My great grandfather was from Canada. Mm. Um, I, I used to ask him when I was young, when he was still alive. I used mm. to ask him all the time. I was like, "What's Canada like? Tell us what it's like." Mm. And and I was like excited about trees and forests and being able to see the stars because you know I grew up in the city. Mm. And his answer was always, "Oh, <laughs> I hated it. It was nothing but mosquitoes and trees." <laughs> and I'm like. The trees. Tell me more about Hello, the trees. Yeah. <laughs> the nursing our travel bug. Welcome. Yeah. Hello, Thanks nursing our travel bug. Good to see you. Mm. Nick's pick says I was upgraded to a 4K a night room Ooh. that faced Cinderella Castle in Disney World. Wow, mm. that is the best happy surprise I think I've ever heard of anyone mm. happening. To That's so cool. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What a beautiful memory. Mm. <laughs> we did have that one upgrade, didn't we, at Disney? Yes, where they gave us the really big suite, didn't we? Yeah, it was, uh, uh, we went for our anniversary, but we didn't, I don't think we told anyone. No, we just asked for it when they, 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 they just upgraded us this huge suite. That was in the um, Grand California. Grand California um, Hotel. And yeah, they, they upgraded us to a suite and it was so beautiful. Oh really nice gosh. balcony, yeah. really nice room. Mm. And then uh, I think in a following year, we said, oh, it's our anniversary. And they didn't upgrade us. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. darn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick's pick says, of course, there is a video. And yeah. um, Nikki, if you could actually link that video in the comments below, um, it will go to spam, but I will unspam it, if you see what I mean. And then um, I'll be able to get it directly. And then people who have watched can see it directly as well. Uh, Victoria May says, yes, so beautiful. Um, there, I've seen Victoria way back when. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you could be named after Victoria Falls. So. Mm. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's about going somewhere warmer from canada i know i know canada can get cold in winter but till down here southern california it is baking at the moment it's too hot it's really hot it's been getting still. up to like 100 degrees during the, the day weather has it's october. been really really strange I know, I know. Um, the air conditioning yeah. went back on didn't it the last couple of days yeah yeah like, and we only have like air, ac in the kitchen yeah we <laughs> there one yeah, room we everyone's inside going desperate. stay here <laughs> yeah it was stupidly hot it mm. has been very foolishly hot yeah and thorn keeps saying she wants to go somewhere snowy so. <laughs> yeah i think she's got her heart set on sweden this month oh it's sweden today was it i think so okay yeah <laughs> nick's pick says it was my daughter's birthday and she had four of her friends mm. with her and i hid and captured their reactions priceless <laughs> oh that's really sweet mm. I, was she happy afterwards that that you got her on film, or or was she doing like the mom? No. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of other surprises we've had. Good surprises. He might have had surprises that we just repressed. Maybe for good reason, possibly. You feel bad, I don't know. but no, upgrade are always a good one. Got upgraded yeah. on a plane once, just um, mm. randomly. He I've said, never oh. been upgraded on a plane. No. Never, ever. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> and the only time I've ever been upgraded was when um, when we were at Disneyland. Mm. That's just that one time. Yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Nikki says she used it whenever she, she is... She's used to it, whether oh. she is or not. Oh, LOL. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> Our children know what to expect of us. <laughs> mm. Cool. Cool. Gosh, I think we're pretty much um, 
wrapping things up. Stories. Yeah, I think we've exhausted <laughs> our surprise stories. But I'm looking forward to doing our Halloween more ghosty one. We had a little, uh, little bit of ghost stuff today, but we want to do more towards the end of the month. So yeah, yeah, sending ghost stories. Send in your ghost stories. stories. Uh, if you can't, like haunted campsites, mm -hmm. um, haunted spaces, mind mm -hmm. you, our um, our honeymoon place that we went to just after we got married mm. in Santa Monica. Okay, we got married in California, but the reception was in England. Mm. Um, it sounds really strange. <laughs> I know, and it, it, I guess it was. Um, but we we got married, and then we went to Santa Monica because that's where the British consulate was, so mm. I could have my paperwork taken care of because we were going to move to the UK, which we did. Mm. Um, but we stayed at, was it the Georgian? It's a Georgian hotel. Yeah, it's called the Georgian yeah. Hotel, um, right next to Santa Monica Pier, which was gorgeous. And it mm. was a 1920s hotel. If you've seen Hollywood Tower of Terror, mm. you will probably think that this uh, hotel um, is like the inspiration for that. It's not quite as tall, mm. but the Art Deco style is everywhere. And that old elevator, that lift that has the ching ching mm. was, was yeah, pretty cool. But the guy inside there. we yeah. didn't have any problems there, but apparently that is one of the most haunted places in LA, mm. I'm told. So mm. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. Take care. Yeah. Thank you, Victoria. You have a great evening. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for stopping by. Live life with the view says you. You said hot, lol. It's been forties and fifties here in Ohio. <laughs> yeah, you're getting ready for a snow. I want to swap. <laughs> want to swap. You don't really want to swap. I wouldn't mind a bit of a bit of snow. A bit of snow, a bit of winter. A bit, but you know what? You're not used to like the cold states in America. You're that's not used true, to that yeah. winter. No, I mean, that true. that winter is. Winter. You have yeah. to shovel yourself out so you can get groceries. Mm. You have to dig yourself out of the snow. People are snowed in. Yeah. I don't think you like that. I think you go stir crazy. <laughs> maybe. You're like, maybe, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's pick says, good night. It's midnight here and time to get some sleep. Thank you for Thanks staying for up yes. with us. Uh, we appreciate that. Good night, Nikki. And uh, we will be signing off too because mm, we've hit time, yeah. over 50 minutes. So <laughs> a bit long um, for us. Thank you everyone for coming by. It was so great to see you and uh, hopefully we will see you again next week. So stay safe, keep camping. Mm. And um, again, get in those stories. Mm. We have a contact form on our website. The link is in the description. <laughs> Just, mm -hmm. Hold on. Down there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, to uh, reading those out. All right. Okay. Take care. Good night. Bye. <laughs>